Hello and welcome to episode 9 of World Tour on Football Manager 2021. Now, since the last episode where we beat Naroka in the first game of the season and drew 2 all with Churchill Bros, we've played a few games offline and we're, we're unbeaten. We're unbeaten in the league this season. That's the positive part of it. Negative part of it is that we've had a lot of draws. So I'll just quickly run through it now. We played Sudeva off the back of the Churchill Brothers game and we managed to smash them 4-0. Lijo Francis got himself a brace. Surinder Shihab, who I don't think I'd played at this point, um, he's a centre midfielder. He was playing because we needed to rest our normal centre midfielders because of the number of games that we were playing in such a short amount of time. But he managed to... I, I didn't even realise he was taking the penalty, to be quite honest with you, but he managed to score it, which is nice. And then Ronaldo got the final goal in that game. We then played Punjab FC, and it was a boring nil-nil draw. I, I think there may have been one highlight in that game. Then we had two friendlies, which we drew both of them 1-1. Lijo Francis getting the goal against Gokulam Kerala and Shankar Ali getting the goal against Odisha. And then we've just drew 1-1 again. So the third game in a row that we've drew 1-1 against Real Kashmir in the league. Bupathi with a header, which was quickly cancelled out by Real Kashmir, getting their own header about five minutes later. So that leaves the league table looking like this. We've played five games this season. Some teams have played seven, some have played six. Um, we're, we are one of the few teams that have played five. So a victory in today's match could take us up to second in the league, but obviously we have two games at hand over Churchill Brothers, who are currently top. So if we win both those two games at hand, we could be top of the table. Not sure if we could be top of the table by the end of this episode, though, because I'm pretty sure Churchill Brothers will be playing in one, if not both, of the, the match days that we are playing in. So today's episode, as promised, is the games against TRAU, last season's champions, who are currently fourth, and Indian Arrows, who have dropped down to seventh. So here is our lineup for the first game against TRAU. We've, we've reverted back to our 4-3-3 wide formation with the three centre midfielders. I had been playing with an attacking midfielder on it, on so, in some of the games, um, but I, I've just decided to change it back. No real logical reason behind that but i'm just trying to keep the opposition guessing from what tactic we're gonna we're gonna play even though they are pretty similar tactics and you may notice that we have a new name in the starting lineup christian Saba, one of our signings he's one of the guys that was signed a while ago but couldn't actually start playing for us properly until christmas day which was four days ago in game so he's going to be playing up front today. You can see his finishing is 12, which is great. Heading of 13 is amazing as well. He's got pretty decent passing as well. So he is going to play up front. That is because Ronaldo was injured and he's still recovering from that injury. So he's on the bench. And the Prince, he's not been playing well. He hasn't scored. He hasn't scored since that penalty where he scored in the last minute. Um, so a change up front today. But other than that, we've got our usual number one goalkeeper, Kumar, in goal. In defence is our normal, Sujathran, Maridasan, Nixon and Nganga. Shankar Ali, Varumada and Suram Bupathi are our centre midfielders. Lijo Francis is on the right wing and David Leonel Praveen is on the left wing with, as I said, Christian Saba up front. Incidentally, we do, we can't, well we can't play him, but this is our other signing that we made a while ago and only became available to play on Christmas Day. But I've made a mistake. So in India, you're allowed four foreign players, but one of them must be Asian. I didn't realize that. So obviously we have Nganga, who is from the Congo. We have the Prince, who's Nigerian. And now we obviously have Christian Saba, who's Ghanaian, and William Opoku, who's Ghanaian. So we can't actually register all four of our foreign players. So I may have to look into moving one of them on, and it would probably be Opoku because he plays in a role a centre midfield attack midfield the role where we've got many backups that are pretty good already and also it would be a pretty decent profit he's valued at £26,000 uh, we signed him for free so I might look into doing that I'll probably not do it straight away because I don't want to make him unhappy I'll probably do it at the end of the season I imagine so here is the team lineup, and of course we have two danger men to look at for TRAU there's Joseph Mayawa Olalei, who I believe scored a hat-trick against us in the first game where they smashed us 5-0 last season. And then Komron Tursunov, who was the league's top goal scorer, had managed to get a couple against us in the reverse fixture last season. So we need to be careful of watching them both. 
So we are going to say, come on lads, show me what I can do without a gesture. It seems to have motivated Sujitran and Bupati. So let's head into the tunnel interview where we see Gurpreet Ganguly, one of the, the our favourites of um, the interviewers. He's asking, given Christian Saba's lack of match fitness, how long can he last out there? His match sharpness isn't too bad. It's average, I would say. So um, he's good to go. If he encounters any setbacks, we'll deal with them accordingly. As there we see the players come out. We are in our blue kit. TRE, you are playing in red. Let's get the game underway. And we have a highlight straight from kickoff. So it's Pradden with the ball. Moves it forward to one of the danger men, Olalei. He plays it back to Singh. Trow just advancing forward very slowly. Long ball forward up to Nang Domba. Tursunov's there. This is dangerous. He's scored. 22 seconds gone. And we are 1-0 down. This could turn into a repeat of last season's game if we're not careful. Okay, so things seem to have calmed down a bit after that very early goal for Trow. We've managed to get a foot in there. Saba's got it on debut. Can he find a teammate? People aren't exactly rushing forward, but Mother's got it now. He plays a ball looking for Francis, but that was never going to get to him. And Singh has picked it up in the left-back position for TRE and plays it back to the goalkeeper. And now they have a chance to build from the back. It's Majumda with a long ball left towards Nongdamba, but that's headed away by Sujitran and then cleared long by their defender and Tursunov is through on goal again and Tursunov shoots but Utpal Kumar is equal to it that time arguably should have been a goal for TRAU there so half time in this I was going to say packed out stadium but it seems to be a, a lot of empty seats over here um, it's 1-0 we, we've had more shots than them but we haven't had any on target yet our XG is slightly lower than theirs as well we need to make some changes at half time I think and Ganga's looking anxious Bupati's still looking motivated which is nice to see um, but we're going to hands on hips say I expect to see a much better showing from you in the second half it's demotivated a few players and Ganga, Mather and Saba let's see if there's anything we can do so Praveen and Sujathran are our worst performers today and then Ganga's looking anxious now I feel it's a bit of a risk to bring Nikhil Raj on for in Ganga but I am going to change Praveen for Sampath Raj and we'll see, we'll see how Nganga gets on for the first little bit of the second half throw in for us in their half finally can it be a chance for us this time it's Mather with the ball plays it left to Nganga our left back who plays it back to Bupati nice passing it to Mather and to Ali every centre midfielder has had a touch of the ball in this move now so slow build of play as always Ali plays it through to Saba he plays it back to Mother Ali again nice passing to Francis Saba back to Francis Francis shoots and Francis scores it's an equaliser Lijo Francis who seems to get all of his goals from that position he obviously scored one in the first episode of this season where he, he had a shot very low down into the left hand corner of the goal and it was from this exact angle here but this time left hand side again bit higher bit bit more close to the goalkeeper but it still managed to go in and that's his fourth goal of the season free kick just inside our half Sujathran takes it's headed away by their defender Sujathran heads it back towards the goal that we're shooting into though and Mada has it now he plays it to Saba nice passing amongst him and Ali as well now Ali with it to Saba back to Ali through to Francis through to Saba what a goal what a finish what a move Christian Saba on his debut the passing there was sublime and Mather played it to Francis who plays it back one one touch to Ali he plays it to Saba back to Ali Francis in first touch through to Saba who places it doesn't place it that's the wrong word smashes it past the goalkeeper and we've turned this around somehow and we could have another chance here throw in to Bupati but Mather loses out to Pradhan and this could be a counter attack for TRAU it's definitely going to be a counter attack for TRAU missed time tackle there Pradden through on goal Pradden shoots I think that hit the post 72 minutes gone we are going to make another change we are going to take off Bupati who's having an average game and bring on Charles Anandraj hopefully to shore up the midfield a little bit with the experienced player now for our final substitution we need to either take off Francis at right wing or Shankar Ali in centre midfield as they are both absolutely knackered and I don't have a right winger on the bench so it's going to be at centre midfield where we made the change it's going to be Aaron Rodriguez coming on for Shankar 
Ali. Yeah, so we, we, yeah, we'll do that. We'll leave him in the box to box row. And hopefully we can see out this victory with just over five minutes to go. Or not. Possible chance for TRAU now. Don't know who that was. Crosses it in. Tersonov was there, but Singh has scored. Bidya's got Singh has got a last minute equaliser for TRAU. So we're going to fire up the team. We're going to go positive for the last one and a half minutes. I don't think it's going to have any effect. It's not. So the game ends. It's two all. It, it's better than our first game against them last season. We'll say that. And our debutante got a goal as well and an 8.1 rating. So you've got to take the positives. Uh, they were all overwhelmed by my feedback of to fire them up. So that didn't go well. Yeah, we'll say what a comeback that was. Great effort and proud, and so should all of you be. Makes them happy, I guess. As Gurpit Ganguly comes back for the post-match tunnel interview as well. Uh, Comrade Tersonov continued his fantastic record of scoring against your team by netting once again today. Why do you find it so hard to stop him? Uh, he's got to be given a ton of credit, really. He puts in the effort and consistently gets rewarded. Christian Saba enjoyed a goal-scoring debut for Chennai City today. What did you make of his performance? If his debut was that good, I can't wait to see how he'll do in the next match. And Bidya Sagar seeing his dramatic late equaliser must have been a real kick in the teeth. How will that moment affect the team? They'll learn from it and they won't concede late in a match like that again, despite the fact that I've said that in an answer to a press conference before. Do you think TRAU's late goal and the subsequent impact it had on the outcome was a fair reflection of the match? Um, I'm disappointed. I feel they've been lucky there. We should have held on for that 2-1 victory. So that draw, another draw, I've only just realised. That is another draw. It's a 2-2 draw this time. Not 1-1 like the last three have been. That leaves us fifth in the table. We haven't moved. We played six games. We've got 10 points. We've got a game in hand over top of the table still. So we still can technically join them on top depending on what other teams in and around us do. But yeah, not, not the best to concede in the last minute. Let's hope for a better showing against Indian Arrows. So just in the gap between the games and we have some monthly awards that have come through and Ligio Francis has came second in the Indian National Football League Player of the Month award losing out to Cameron Tursunov. But then he's actually come top of the Young Player of the Month award with Maria Dasan coming second. So well done to him, we'll congratulate him. Pat him on the shoulder, well done. There we go. And he's dedicated the award to me. How kind of him. Apparently, um, he's, well, he's obviously he's considering a contract offer from us, but rumours are still linking him with the transfer elsewhere, apparently. Even though nobody seems to be interested. Okay. And there's some India qualification changes for next season have just been announced. So due to poor results for Indian clubs over the last few seasons, we've been given the following qualification places for next season. So we get an Asian, Asian Champions League playoff place, an Asian Champions League first preliminary round place, and an Asian Confederation Cup place. Uh, I think we as the Indian National Football League only get one of those places anyway because the Super League gets the main ones yeah we get we qualify for the Confederation Cup playoff I think I think it's not really clear I, I guess I won't know until I do it although I could find out because TRAU should be playing in it shouldn't they or not so here we go, heading into our game against Indian Arrows. This is what the league table looks like. We've dropped down to sixth in the time between games, but we do have a couple of games in hand over the teams above us. A win today could still take us up to top. So it's like what I was saying at the end of last season. This league just seems to be super close. So we are one of only two teams who are currently unbeaten, but like nobody runs away with it. Even the team that's won four games, which is the most number of games that anyone's won this season, they've also lost three. That's Kashmir FC. They're, they're the team that got promoted this season as well. So it's just going to be so close every single season in this league. But like I said, victory today can take us up to top of the table. So we are going to keep the exact same lineup that we played in the last game against TRAU for this one. Christian Saba obviously scored in the last game. So despite the fact Ronaldo is back from injury, he's only recommended to play 75 minutes of action anyway. So if Christian Sabah's not having the best of games we have the option of Ronaldo on the bench we also have the option of the Prince who is 
back up to our backup now but yeah this is our team for the second game as well let's see how we do against Indian Arrows I'm going to pump fists with the team talk and say come on lads show what we can do to keep our run going we're six games unbeaten uh, a lot of them have been draws to be fair but still it still counts as being unbeaten as Ashim Singh is our interviewer for today's tunnel interview and he asks can we see Indian Arrows employing any tactical surprises I'm going to say I think they have to to stand a chance your team selection has offered little by way of surprise today are you confident ahead of kickoff uh, I'd make a slight favourite and we've prepared well but we have to make sure we start well are you confident Shankar Ali will perform today I'm very happy with him and have no worries at all have Pravito Raju's recent injury problems contributed to his absence today? Uh, yeah, I think he's been injured, hasn't he? He's well, he's not a first choice. I don't want to upset him. I'd rather talk about the 11 players who will just be starting this match. That stand looks very empty. Oh, we're at Indian Arrows Stadium, which is is quite small in comparison to some of the stadiums that we've been at previously in the in the league. And there's not many fans here, but Nganga takes a free kick. Bupati with a header just over the bar. That entire stand is empty. What is going on? Where are the fans? Another free kick. Nganga to take again towards back post. Maria Dasa nuts offside. The ball bounced to. It was played into a beautiful area from Nganga. Maria Dasa at the back post. But let's have a look. Yeah. Maria Dasa was. Ooh, was Maria Dasa offside? I'm not sure about that one. So I've been sat here checking this image, this still image, for about five minutes now, and I still can't tell if he's offside or not. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, because I honestly can't tell. I think he might just be offside, maybe just by a shoulder, but it, it's very tight. Corner, and Gang get to take it again. And who's that? It's Saba. Saba scores again. Nganga with his set pieces just knows where to make the ball bounce that's the second time he did that for the Maria Dasan goal which was obviously disallowed just bounces right in the centre of the box and then Saba was there to tap it home and it's 1-0 another free kick Nganga to take who's going to get it this time nobody it's headed away by Singh but Francis is going to come and collect it plays it back to Ali now Francis again finds Mather centre back Mary Dassin quite far up the field after that set piece but Francis has it in the box dribbles past one Francis goes alone and Francis scores what a finish he just skipped past their defender made him fall over onto his arse and then Francis smashed it into the back of the net Mary Dassin the centre back with the assist there Francis decides to take it on his own past that defender and from a very tight angle just smashes it the goalkeeper's near post it's 2-0 we've looked extremely dangerous from set pieces in this game we seem to have had a lot they seem to be conceding a lot of free kicks and giving away a lot of corners so I'm going to outstretch my arms and I'm going to say I'm very pleased with the performance keep it up let's see how they're doing Ligio Francis is looking like he's lacking a bit in conditioning but he's having a good game uh, attacking right midfield we don't have anyone that is technically an attacking right midfielder to put there we could of course put Sampath Raj there or we could move Saba to attacking right midfield and then swap Francis for Ronaldo or the Prince but we'll um we'll we'll give it a little while we'll wait until that's in the red everyone's rating seems to be pretty good as well so I don't think there's any need for any changes heading into the second half okay Francis has dropped into the red now so we're going to make a change we are are going to keep Saba on we're going to move him to right wing and we are going to bring Ronaldo on up front just under 10 minutes to go now and we've got a few more players who are looking a bit tired so Varin Mather is going to come off we're going to bring on Aaron Rodriguez in his place Mario Dasan's looking a bit tired too but we don't have a centre back on the bench so we'll just do that one sub for now and is this going to be a chance it's Praveen with the ball Gives it to Mother. Nicely to Ronaldo who turns. Doesn't lose the ball. He shoots but it's blocked by a defender. And this could be a counter-attacking opportunity for Indian Arrows. But they lose out to Praveen anyway. So it isn't. So there we go. Full time in an almost empty arena. And we have beaten Indian Arrows by two goals to nil. I'm going to outstretch arms again and say well done. Good win for us that one. And we've just got an achievement. 
the achievement was for um, training a player in his new position. I don't know who that was. I think it might be Ligio Francis, but we didn't actually play him in his new position. His new position is centre midfielder. It's a bit weird. But uh, that result takes Chennai City top of the league. You must be pleased with that. I am. I'm very pleased. It's up to them to keep going now. You've got to be pleased with the result and a performance as impressive as that. We were excellent. It was a top performance. And then Maria Dasan picked up the Player of the Match award. How did I rate his performance? He's quality, and I think everyone knows that. The supporters seem to respond well to your considered passing approach today. Is that something we can expect to see more of from you? You've asked me this question quite a lot, Sandy, and I've answered it the same way every time. I've made a commitment to the club to play that way because I feel it gives us the strongest chance of succeeding. And we just had this question. That winner's put your side top. Do you think you can make that spot your own? Absolutely. So there we go. There's confirmation of us sitting at the top of the table. We've got a game in hand over the team who are below us, Churchill Brothers. So things looking good for Chennai City as we head towards the halfway point of the season. So this is the training report for Ligio Francis. And this is why I got that achievement. So he has now perfected his ability to play as a Metsala on support. We won't be playing him there. I, I set my, my um, assistant to do all the training unless I see something that I'm, I'm not happy with. But yeah, I, I don't know why he's been set to, to train in that position. I guess it's good extra backup, I suppose. There's the confirmation of our 530 squids going into the bank for that victory. And we'll, we'll praise Mario Dassin's performance because he had a good one. Put arm around, defensive work last time out was top notch, keep it up. And he looks very positive, excellent. And there is the news item about us making it seven games unbeaten in the league this season so that includes four draws three victories but still like i said earlier still unbeaten speaking of unbeaten punjab fc's nine game unbeaten away run apparently ended today at the hands of azor fc punjab of course are possibly one of our rivals it's very hard to say with the points being so close as they are so Deva are only 10 points behind and they're bottom of the table so all to play for still so looking ahead to the next episode, I think we're going to do the Churchill Brothers game because they are currently second, so they're our closest rival at the moment. That will have probably all change by the time we come to play them. But we will play the games against Churchill Brothers and current bottom of the table, Sudeva, in the next episode. Meaning we play Azol, who are seventh, Mohammedan, who are eighth, Kashmir, who are fourth and the newbies to the league, and Naroka, who are tenth in the meantime. But that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to get all my content when it comes out, hit the notification bell to stay notified, and I'll see you next time.